I hope you all are good. Uh, hmm. All right. So guys, today our topic is an interesting one, uh, a word which is very famous, right? Uh, antidepressant. And depression, like I think everybody we see nowadays, they claim they have depression, isn't it? Wait a minute. Okay, never mind. All right. So the thing is, when we are talking about antidepressants, wait a minute, everybody. All right. All right, everybody. So I was saying that uh, when we talk about depression, okay. So I think everybody is saying these days that we are, we have depression, we are undergoing depression and all that, without even knowing that depression is actually a clinical word. It is not a scenario where you're actually not feeling uh, uh, good. We're not, you, you're, where you're not feeling energized. And it is more about a, chem, uh, a chemical imbalance in your brain, which actually causes depression, right? So today we are going to talk about the causes of depression and we are going to talk about the uh, classification, excuse me. Okay, so starting up here, uh, these are all of the classes which we will be discussing today. That is selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, drugs that inhibit serotonin and norepinephrine transporters. Uh, I'm sure you all remember the terminology CERT and NERT that is uh, we talked in our, uh, we talked in last, uh, we talked in the third semester, right? Okay, so uh, then we have serotonin receptor antagonist, atypical heterocyclic antidepressant and monoamine oxidase inhibitor. And I'm sure you are very much aware of these terminologies because when we were talking about classification, uh, when we were talking about neurotransmitter introduction uh, last, last year, so we were very much vigilant about using all of these terminology into our lesson, right? Okay, so let's dig into it. First of all, I attach this uh, PET scan of uh, the brain so that everybody would know that how exactly brain looks like when you're depressed. You see a PET scan measures vital functions such as blood flow, oxygen use and blood sugar, um, glucose metabolism, right? Uh, so the thing is the brain which is not depressed it is pretty much active, right? And the brain, which is depressed, you see almost no activity is there, right? It is extremely depressed, okay? Uh, furthermore, when we look at these scans of the brain, we can pretty much conclude that a person who is depressed would have no interest in any of the activities, right? And on the other hand, the person which is not depressed, uh, maybe they are down for a moment, maybe uh, they're not feeling well for a moment, but eventually they will just get up and start doing their daily chores. It is not that that they will, you know, let things go however they're going, okay? For example, if, um, God forbid, I'll undergo a depressive state, maybe, I will not even take your classes, right? Uh, okay, the reason of delaying the classes is this. As you know, I also teach OA level students. So, and they their exam is really on the corner, okay? So I am kind of giving more attention to them these days because it's their last two weeks, okay, with me. So please don't mind that. I am not in the depressive state, okay? It is just this that uh, they need me more as compared to you guys. And inshallah, after two weeks, uh, I will be again focused towards you only and uh, preparing uh, slides for you so that uh, inshallah, we learn better. Okay. All right. So uh, talking about the chemicals, which I talked earlier, uh, that um, you see, they, these are the chemicals which are very much needed for the brain. 
dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine, right? If these chemicals are in a balance, in a good balance, you're a happy person, okay? And if uh, these hormones uh, and these uh, like chemicals are not in a particular balance, so you would not feel good, you would be in a depressive state and all that. Oh yeah, I was saying that in the previous slide when we, I actually switched. So the thing is, when a person is not depressed, okay, they, they, they won't just care whatever is going on around them, okay? Um, they won't eat properly. They won't uh, take any interest in daily activities. They would socially, uh, you know, they would, uh, they would not be social at all. They would isolate themselves, okay? And when a person is not depressed, maybe that person won't eat food, but uh, because something wrong happened in the life, right? But they will eventually get up and maybe deliver a lecture or maybe take the lecture, okay? So this is the difference between the depressive and non-depressed person, okay? All right. So we were talking about these uh, hormones, these chemicals, and I'm sure that um, last year we covered it in deep detail. If you want to know about them even again, so why don't you just go to the playlist of neurotransmitters and you know watch this, those videos again. It is good to recall the stuff, right? Uh, and that was a major reason why I did not uh, go through the serotonin and dopamine while a chapter last semester because I wanted you to revise in this term in this semester because this is more important and this will make more sense to you now right okay when we talk about serotonin okay so this is basically has a major function in the mood in memory processing in sleep and in cognition and when we talk about dopamine so you know it's more about feeling happy it's more rewarding okay so all of these functions are like that as you know, I love chemistry. So these are the, uh, the chemical structures of the uh, of the different chemicals which are vital uh, for proper functioning of the brain. So I do expect from you to at least note the main uh, gist of everything, right? That which one is a catechol ring, which one has double ring structure and all, right? Because that will help you to understand how exactly it is working in the body, okay, these chemicals. Okay, guys, we have a biogenic amine theory. Now, biogenic amine theory says that depression is due to reduced functional activity of one or more brain amines, okay? This is the uh, thing that, uh, what is the biogenic amines? What are the monoamines? You know that these are the monoamines which we have talked about and we will talk about, right? Okay. So I'm not going into deep detail because there's a video already on that. You can always go through the playlist and watch that, okay? All right, so uh, if you look here, uh, you remember we talked about upregulation of receptors, we talked about downregulation of receptors, and we talked about sequestrant effect on the receptors, right? So here you can see that, it, see, this is the normal transmission that's happening, okay? And if the monomine transmission is depleted, then what will happen? There would be a lot of receptors, the upregulation of receptors will be there, right? And then imagine if these receptors are coding for um, dopamine or serotonin, just imagine what will happen to the person. A lot of dopamine would attach here, right? They, because the number of receptors would increase, then what will happen? The person will would, would become super happy. And when the person will, the receptors will be a lot more in quantity, the person will become super happy. Then obviously there would be a compensatory mechanism where there would be a sequestrant effect and uh, they, then down regulation of the receptors will start, right? So a person who was previously manic, that person will go into depression now, right? So these are the two sides of the story which you need to remember. And this is the biogenic theory, which is very important for your exam. Okay, now again, symptoms of depression. You see, when we'll talk about symptoms of depression, there will be two kinds of uh, symptoms, okay? One will be emotional and the other one would be biological, right? Okay, so you see the, the very negative, the most threatening symptom is suicidal thoughts, which 
uh, you know, you just can't ignore. And these are the, uh, this is the major, wait, I've got a message. Uh, Muhammad Mohsen, yeah, Muhammad Mohsen, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Because I tell you what, all of a sudden, any one of you would open up the mic and some weirdest sound would be produced. Can you please type it? Or maybe if you are having difficulty in typing, why don't you just send me a WhatsApp message of your question and then I'll re respond to it, okay? But uh, opening the mic here means that uh, maybe my entire effort of, uh, you know, of the entire time will go in vain and I don't want that to happen, right? I'm already running short of time. I need uh, 30 hours per day, but unfortunately I have 24 hours per day. So I don't have time to record it again. Okay. All right. So Bita, WhatsApp, um, send me the voice message on WhatsApp if you can't type in here. Okay. Uh, and then inshallah, I will respond to you. Maybe not right now. Maybe I'll iftar. Okay. After iftar. Wait, I've got a message again. Okay, good. All right. Uh, okay, Bita, coming up back. See, I was saying that um, maybe you can, uh, you know, ignore rest of the symptoms, but one of the symptoms that really fatal is suicidal thoughts. Okay. And the thing is when somebody is going through suicidal thoughts, see, uh, for example, I did something amazing. Okay. And, um, uh, I wasn't rewarded and then I was upset and I was really in depressive mode. Right. So there are two ways to tackle it. First one would be that I would be super depressed and I will take it on my mind and then I'll be into depression forever, okay? Uh, and the other aspect could be that I'll talk to people around me, right? Or maybe other people will observe me that I am not feeling well, I am super upset, and um, then I and other people will help me to get me out of it, right? So these are the two possibilities, <laughs> right? So the thing is, when somebody is having suicidal thoughts and you see that the person is not behaving in a normal way, okay? So what should you do? You should counsel them, right? Because that should be the first step, right? I'm not saying that deal clinical depression with counseling only, no. I'm saying that the first, first step of dealing with depression should be counseling, right? Because, um, Unfortunately, when in the next class, when you will talk about the drugs and when you will discuss the side effects of these drugs and when you when we will discuss what happens to the person when they start to take antidepressant drugs. So I'm sure you all will say it's better to get treated without taking any drugs rather than taking these drugs because these drugs antidepressants have some serious side effects and some serious withdrawal effects. Right. But if somebody is in deep depression, we don't have an option. We have to administer medicine to them, right? But then again, I say uh, antidepressant is not memory eraser, right? Do not take antidepressant. Do not take any medication so that you will get rid of it. I have seen people smoking and they reason it that we are smoking because we want to deal with our anxiety or depression. And I say, give me two packs of it because I need more. So the thing is, depression and anxiety cannot be treated with anything. It's just that you need to think. And one of the best ways I have, uh, one of the best practices that I have is this. I take a pen and paper, and then I make two columns, right? I write plus on one side, and on the other side, I write negative. And then I say, if I choose to stay in this situation, if I choose to stay um into the depression more or into the negative aspects of this thing uh, so what negative effects, effects can happen what positive effects can happen and how to overcome those negative effects so this is a complete you know thing i do i think uh, on the weekend when i'm not feeling well after a week anyways uh so the thing is other symptoms are lack of motivation headaches muscle aches and stomach upset weight gain or weight loss Difficulty sleeping, irritability, withdrawal from friends and family, fatigue, loss of joy or pleasure, poor concentration, right? And guys, uh, you see, in the malus to you, right? After every 
pain there is a certain area when you would actually have an ease in that painful situation right so please do not give up hope at all especially when we have covid these days and unfortunately we are losing our loved ones so situations are getting very uh, cranky and they these are not good situation we are in so please be positive and observe people around you and if somebody is upset so please talk to them and counsel them okay and provide help if you want if you can okay all right oh my god this is a blurry slide wait let me fix it very quickly i actually took this from somewhere because i did not have time okay all right guys i hope it's better okay classification of depression on the basis of etiology so the first one could be reactive and endogenous depression right okay and the second one is primary and secondary depression right okay when we talk about reactive so like i said maybe i'm upset over something some um, some event in my life okay and then i'm trying i i've gotten into depression okay so the reasons uh, you know uh, could be like that okay reactive depression is like responding to the external stimulus okay so it is that endogenous depression is that how exactly chemicals in your body in your brain are wait i have a message again okay sanaula um i will respond to your this query okay and inshallah taala as soon as we will uh, go through upcoming slides you will find the reason sanaula just asked that during fasting most people uh, feel depression and angry what is the scientific reason behind it and we are going to talk about it in the upcoming slides okay all right so the thing is endogenous depression is more about the due to chemicals okay which are imbalance okay and then because of that you go into a depression depression then we have primary and secondary secondary uh, because of previous non effective uh, psychiatric illnesses uh, and other oh god guys okay <laughs> all right i'm getting so many messages in the chat box today from you all okay based on symptoms we have neurotic depression and psychotic depression you see these are the two kind of depressions what is neurosis and what is psychosis you can go through these slides pause the video and watch these uh, okay i don't want to go into it but just let's just read the definition of it that see neurosis is neurosis is about mild functional neuro psych uh, psych cycle um sorry disorders that confirm themselves in a specific clinical phenomena in the absence of uh, cyclical um psychological it should be to make it better okay phenomena and psychosis is actually about uh, you know okay let me make it even more wait yahan pe if you see here theek hai uh ha huh. see psychosis is linked to the psychiatric states okay uh, remember we talked about the schizophrenia and all that okay so depression arising due to that is uh, termed into the psychotic depression okay so cause uh, cases of depressive depression is so called biological symptoms and severe forms come under psychotic depression milder forms come under neurotic depression because neurotic depression are not linked to the psychiatric states okay all right so based on course and time of life uh, this is important this is see this can be uh, classified this kind of depression can be linked into two categories okay one is unipolar and the other one is bipolar as well however okay unipolar and then bipolar right okay unipolar okay uni means one time right and by is two two times like two there are two aspects attached to it and unipolar has one aspect attached to it right okay so unipolar is is this that there is only a depressive state that is it okay so some of them may have many many episodes later on but uh in the start there is only the depressive state okay a uh, many stay episode might remain under diagnosis because that happens later 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 on 
and it is not even um, prominent that much okay then there is bipolar which we talked about when we were discussing its schizophrenia remember so bi means two aspects right so there is the at at a part let's say in the morning person was maniac person was laughing person was euphoric and then all of a sudden in the evening they went into depression then at night they again went into um a depressive state okay so the thing is that this is bipolar right okay so bipolar is usually linked to hereditary like if somebody's grandparents had it so the chances of children to get it is even more okay uh its earlier name was maniac depressive psychosis okay and it's associated with over enthusiasm over confidence irritation aggression and all that okay all right so again we have classification of antidepressants in that we have reversible inhibitors of monoamine um oxidase a then we have selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors a typical antidepressants then we have snris serotonin and noradrenaline reuptake inhibitors then we have tcs in tcs we have two subcategories one is norepinephrine and serotonin reuptake inhibitor and predominantly norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors we will talk about all of these class in deep detail in upcoming lecture theek hai okay now again the interesting part mechanism of action you see guys uh, if you remember we talked about serotonin how exactly it's released and everything right so the thing is if you i i hope you do remember this that there were reuptake uh, protein channels right which we were uh, which were actually reuptaking it okay basically if you remember i just told you all that serotonin when it is released here okay so th th the postsynaptic neurons would actually get, get it binded to it and then all of the good effects would be produced right but imagine what will happen if the reuptake um, but uh, just imagine what will happen if the serotonin which we need it okay it is actually reuptaken right so here what will happen in the synaptic cleft there will be diminished quantity of uh, serotonin right amir said what do you mean by the term mania in bipolar beta mania means they're super happy right they laughing and everything okay and then depressive state means that they were into deep depression okay all right so guys i was telling you here that serotonin serotonin uh, serotonin reuptake inhibitor okay so it is that that serotonin is released but it is uptaken so we don't get the desired effects right serotonin does not bind to the receptors well enough so what do we do is this in order to inhibit this um uh, this reuptake thing okay what do we do is this we block this uh, transporter okay and when we block this transporter so quantity of uh, serotonin is actually enhanced in the synaptic cleft and that's how we are achieving our target okay so that's how ssris work okay so ssris and tcas snri by the way snri is uh serotonin uh, nor um, nor epinephrine selective nor epinephrine uh, reuptake inhibitors right so wait a minute if you remember we had this thing right that dopamine and then dopamine is being changed into nor epinephrine and then we have serotonin right uh, th this slide actually brings me to answer question of sanawla he asked me that why exactly people are um, uh, are upset right when they are fasting and the reason lies here you see the uh, the initiators of the entire cycles tyrosine tryptophan okay you get it when you eat right and that's how they undergo metabolism metabolism and that's how they they change into dopamine or epinephrine and all of these hormones which are essential right now just imagine these tyrosine tryptophan is not available because you're not eating anything right so eventually the hormones 
and the uh, chemical messengers, the neurotransmitters will not be released. And that's how uh, the body will go into depressive state, right? Sanaullah. Okay, coming up back here, beta. Uh, SNRIs are the newer drugs in this class. The older drugs are referred to as TCAs. Compared with SSRIs and NRI, SNRIs, these are now considered second line drugs for the treatment of depression. These drugs inhibit CERT and um, norepinephrine transporter to respectively potentiate the action of serot uh, serotonin and uh, norepinephrine. However, individual drugs vary considerably in their inhibition of CERT and NET. Um, SNRIs are less likely to block alpha adrenal receptor or to have anticholinergic or antihistaminic action this we will discuss in our upcoming lecture okay so don't worry and thus have fewer adverse effects than the tcs then we have serotonin reuptake antagonist uh, well sorry serotonin receptor antagonist okay so these drugs block primarily the serotonin uh, receptor Trazodone is also an histamine H1 receptor antagonist, atypical heterocyclic antidepressants. So these are the antidepressants which are not used usually, okay, but they're just used in a certain um, certain uh, condition, right? So maprotoline and amoxapine inhibit NET and have anticholinergic properties. Amoxapine also inhibits post-junctional dopamine D2 receptor, mirtazapine inhibits 5-HC2 receptor, alpha-2 autoreceptor, I'm sure you remember what's autoreceptor, and histamine H1 receptor. Buperon has a poorly understood mechanism of action. So monoamine oxidase inhibitor, if you remember, when we discussed about neurotransmitter, within the neuron, there was monoamine oxidase, which was actually uh, breaking and cleaving the neurotransmitters, the neurotransmitters which were actually formed within the neuron, right? So this monoamine oxidase inhibitor would actually block that uh, enzyme uh, from cleaving the important neurotransmitters, right? So monoamine oxidase inhibitors rapidly, non-selectively, and irreversibly inhibit the activity of enzymes monoamine A and B. Inhibition of monoamine A, which preferentially degrades norepinephrine and epinephrine and serotonin, is responsible for therapeutic efficacy for phenylzine and um, trenyl cipromine as antidepressants. Monoamine oxidase inhibition continues for up to two to three weeks after their elimination from the body. Uh, and this is how uh, it works, right? Like I said, that these autoreceptors, these transporters, they are blocked and that's how the major effect is being produced, okay? Along with that, monoamine oxidase is there within the neuron and they're also inhibited in order to get the effect, right? Because our major, major target is to enhance the concentration of these neurotransmitters within the neuron and in the synaptic lift, right, everybody? Take care, everyone. Allah Hafiz. And if you have any query, you can always WhatsApp me or ask in the Google Classroom, whatever way suits you. Okay, Allah Hafiz.